We still haven't found loops in the network, have we? Let's cover that now. The root bridge sends out BPDUs. Switches receive them. Sometimes a switch may receive BPDUs on a few different ports. In the example shown here, the switch has found two paths to the root bridge. The BPDU with the shortest path is the superior BPDU. The BPDU with the longest path is the inferior BPDU. Of course, the interface that receives the superior BPDU is the root port. What about the port that receives the inferior BPDU? This represents an alternate path to the root bridge. If there is more than one path to the root bridge, there is a loop. So congratulations, we have now discovered a loop in our network. And we simply can't have that. So one link needs to be blocked. But which one? It's not too hard to guess, is it? The switch blocks the interface that represents the longer path cost. This way, the better path is active. The ports that the spanning tree algorithm will block are simply called blocked ports. No traffic other than BPDUs can flow over these ports. This process repeats on all switches for all alternative paths to the root. Once loops have been blocked, we can see the tree-like structure starting at the root bridge. Switches also forward on any BPDUs they receive, so other switches can learn a path to the root bridge. They send them out all interfaces except the root port. If a port isn't a root port and it isn't a blocking port, then it's called a designated port. This is a valid path to send traffic on, but it's not a path to the root bridge. The key points from this section are root ports point toward the root bridge, designated ports point away from the root bridge. Here's a few more questions for you to test your understanding of these concepts.